I don't know if you know this, Thor news is for winners, and that's why you're here. So stick around. Hit the button, baby. Stay cool. This is a Thor news presentation. Thor news presents party dance time. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this Planet X story is crazier than I am. We literally, without exaggeration, might have up to six different Planet X's. I'm about to start a new white paper series where we go through the white papers to figure out the actual science and what the scientists are saying. Now, from all reports that I've gathered, we literally have a possibility of three Planet X's. We literally have a possibility of six Planet X's with three different teams. We have Team 13, which is Shepard and Trujillo, which I've done videos of in the last year, where they believe because of the orbit of 13 different trans-Neptunian objects and Kuiper Belt objects, they believe that a large object is shepherding their orbits as they are all meeting on or about our ecliptic right now. And they think there may be one or two giant planets out there. That's Team 1. Team 2 is the GNA team, Vlemings, Ramstead, Merker, and Davidson, who believe they have found a fast moving object, the serendipitous discovery of a possible new solar system object with Alma. It's either small, asterisk, and between 12 and 25 astronomical units from the sun. It has a size of 220 to 880 kilometers, and it has a friend with it, as we've seen in the photographs. Or it could be giant and way out in the middle of nowhere, which is weird. And then Team 3 is the Aquilide team, I believe, where they believe they found two other objects. It's just a basic, simple breakdown of what I know to be true. And it's hilarious. I get a lot of comments like, fear mongers like you need to shut up and, and this is all bullshit. Well, dude, no. A, I'm not fear-mongering anything. I'm not saying it's going to disrupt or kill anybody. Not even implying that right now. And B, this is real, people. You know, we got three teams of pro astronomers who are saying, hey, we found some cool planet stuff. And then you got Mike Brown wetting his pants, shit in the bed, crying like, no! Which is cute, Mikey. Give it to Mikey. He'll dislike anything. So yeah, feel free to help me on this journey to figure out what we're dealing with. Because the Gana object, possibly being 12 to 25 astronomical units from our sun, is fascinating. Amazingly and utterly fascinating. So this video is just to let you know, A, we could have up to six Planet X objects. And B, this whole story is wacky. I'm going to have to do several videos on it. And C, it's real scientific -y, bro. This is some real science white paper shit we're looking at, right? You know? So, if you have any information for me, please leave it in the comments. I appreciate it, and I'm going to try and take this one pretty seriously. Me and my super buddy Sage are going to break down all the white papers for you. We're going to do some hardcore research, some hardcore science, and we're going to give you the results. I hope you appreciate it. Oh my God, look. The Phil Plate is skeptical. Is he skeptical over dark matter? Nope. Is he skeptical over politicians' ability to fix the climate from changing in a negative way? Nope. Is he skeptical about the progress of the James Webb Space Telescope? Nope. Is he skeptical about the state of human space exploration? Nope. Apparently, he's skeptical about multiple astronomers who have found multiple planet X's. Hard to believe. I know. Asterisk. LOL. What? Hashtag seems legit. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a glowing pixel alert. Glowing pixel alert. Two astronomical research papers have just been submitted to the journal Astronomy and Astrophysics, and both make startling claims. The two teams claim they may have each separately found Two very distant solar system objects, possibly far more distant than anything previously seen. Whoa, are you saying we found four Planet X's, bro? Or two groups found two? I'm confused. Stupid math. Okay, hang tight a sec. I know a lot of media will jump on this with the headlines like ninth or maybe tenth planet found, and the Nibiru crowd will go apoplectic. But don't fire up the warp drive just yet, folks. There are many reasons to be very skeptical here. Oh. Suzanne, what are you saying, Phil? I mean, the first two guys that I had been following who thought they might have found not Planet X, but its existence in the orbit of 13 different Kuiper Belt objects seem to have a pretty solid argument, bro. Now we got more astronomers? Okay, let's dig into part two of this really super fascinating story. First, the papers are not yet peer-reviewed. They've been submitted to a journal, but not vetted. 
And apparently there's only one real expert on this subject, and that is Mike. I killed Pluto Brown. And he's the only peer, and he said, nah, seems too lucky. It's like finding a cup of piss in the ocean, and then drinking it, and having it taste like the greatest wine you've ever had. I think that was the exact, um, meta rhythm analogy he used. So there may be errors in them. Also, both are based on limited observations. Technically, isn't everything a limited observation? Two detections each. I know, it's like, someone's breaking in your house. How many detections do you really need over a short time range? And third, the sheer unlikeliness of them finding a planet, given the small field of view they used, makes me very skeptical indeed. So while interesting, it's not at all clear that these objects are even real, let alone distant planets. So what's what? Let's see. Team 1, West Aqualand. Both teams used observations from the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array, or ALMA. One team was observing the nearby star Alpha Centauri. The other team, the more distant W. Aquilae. The later observation is easier to explain. Oh, goody. So I'll start there. Oh, double goody. They observed W. Aquiland in March, and again in April 2014. They saw a source in the first observation that appeared to move by the time of the second. A third observation was made in May 2014, but nothing was seen. Given how much it appeared to move and how bright it is, they conclude it is consistent with an object in the solar system no farther than about 600 billion kilometers from the sun. How about AUs, Phil? That's way easier for me to understand. Astronomical units, man. Astronomical units! You know, that's the distance from the Earth to the Sun. Okay, if it is far away, it could be a planet-sized object. But if it's closer, it would have to be smaller. It could be one of the smaller, icy worlds, well outside Neptune's orbit. It must not be there. Just because it's out, distant, doesn't mean it's cold, man. They're not all made of ice. You know, like, solar systems are like atoms. And, like, let's say a proton is icy and a neutron is hot. You know, like, just because you named them asteroids, planets, planetoids, dwarfs, doesn't mean that they're really that simple and they break down into those simplified labels. Whatever. Heck, Pluto and Eris, well, that's the first time I think you've ever mentioned Eris, are large examples of them. And different populations of them may extend past Neptune for hundreds of billions of kilometers. So it's not too weird to wonder if this were one of those. And to be honest, if this is real, I'd bet that's what it is. What, a boring chunk of ice? Sweet. Or it might not exist at all. Bear that in mind. Kind of like dark matter. There may be a lot of smaller icy objects far out past Neptune. We've only found a handful so far. Team 2, Alpha Centauri. The second team were looking for planets around two stars that make up the binary system of Alpha Centauri, the nearest star system in space to the sun. One planet was claimed to have been found in 2012, but since then has fallen into controversy. Sweet. Another group looked at the data and said the planet was a spurious result. In other words, not real. Still, that doesn't mean there isn't a planet here. The problem is, the stars are so bright, they drown out any much fainter nearby planets. Looking at longer wavelength light makes that easier. The stars don't put out much light at those wavelengths, while planets, which are much cooler than stars, imagine that, might. That makes the huge contest. I'm confused, man. Like, what about the dudes that found one in between Neptune and Saturn? Or Pluto? That, that's fascinating. That's what I'm looking for. Hold on, I'll be right back. God bless everybody. Have a great day. Oh my god, if we do find new planets in our solar system, that means they're going to have to probably demote Uranus. Uranus has been demoted. Sorry, ma'am.